All right, welcome back to the Sci-Fi Wire live stage at New York Comic Con, day one. How's everybody doing? My name is Mike Avila, and I'm with Sci-Fi Wire, and I host Behind the Panel for the site, which is where we talk to all sorts of comic book legends and icons and superstars about what they do. And today I'm joined by the two grandmasters of DC Comics. Grandmasters. Dan DiDio and Jim Lee. Hello, gentlemen. Hey. Howdy, how are you? Thanks for having us. Hey, it was great. I know you guys just had your Meet the Publishers panel. Yes, we did. I'm sure there was much hilarity that ensued there. It was actually very restrained, I think, I thought the crowd yeah. was rather quiet. Well, yeah. Look at this crowd. Come on, it's a Thursday. Yeah. Let's go, guys. Play. Let's be happy here. Let's go. Be loud. That's what we need. I thought this was New York. What's Come going on? on? Come on. I keep on telling the people in California what New Yorkers sound like. You look at me make me look bad. <laughs> All right, let's get right to it, because you guys, as usual, dropped a lot of news at your panel. Uh, a bunch of great new initiatives, including a new line curated by Brian Bendis, who apparently is not busy enough for you guys. Uh, and he's doing something yeah. new. For, look, for look let me tell you, when we approached him about doing this deal, his, his team, his attorneys were like, yeah, I don't know if we can commit to two books a month. Like, and we thought like he was just kind of coming over to finish out his career in comics and make that transition into Hollywood. And then he, he signs up, and then he's just like pitching ideas left and right, and we're doing a ton of books with him. So it's amazing that really he came over to publish comics with us. So we've been very, very fortunate. Yeah, I mean, honestly, you know, working with Brian has been really great. I mean, we have so many great guys with us right now. You know, I've, I've spent so many years working with Jeff Johns and then Scott Snyder and then Tom King. But that Brian come in, I mentioned Grant Morrison, that Brian come in, it's it's just a lot of fun because it comes in with a new perspective. He's been at Marvel for so long. He's seen our characters for the first time. He's talking about it for the first time. And it brings a freshness and a new point of view, which is exactly what we need in order to keep our characters relevant, you know? You saw it right away with Superman. Yeah, I mean, everybody thought he was going to be the Batman guy, uh, but he came in. He has a real affinity for Superman. He's a Cleveland boy. Uh, he loves the character, and it's it's really interesting to see what he wants to do, and more importantly, how he plans to expand Superman next year. Right. He's been surprising us all from the get-go. You know, I signed him board to do a short story for Action 1000 with him, yeah. so I thought it was going to be like talking heads in a newsroom or something, and it was just like boom, 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 introducing Rogozara, just action nonstop, and. But he put a lot of those Brian Bendisms in, in there. It was just a lot of fun working with him. I, I, of course, what I set you guys up to to plug, which you guys did a horrible job on, was Wonder Comics. I was about to just uh, say that. You know, like, it's funny with the Wonder Comics too, because we we do these we do these pop up imprints. It's something that we really feel passionate about because what it does, it takes a top line creator and it allows them to touch and play with the different characters that are pretty much pretty much you know nobody wants to be involved yeah. in. And uh, you, he's, his his mainline book is Young Justice, but he's also working on a Wonder Twins book with them. He's also doing a, a new character called Naomi, and he's also doing Dial H for Hero. Character things that we feel we love personally, but we want to find a way to really bring them, make them alive again. Mark Russell's doing the Wonder Twins book, right? Mark Russell's doing Wonder Twins, yes. Yes. It's going to be pretty yeah, but crazy. It's got Amethyst in there. It's got Connor Kent. He's a lot of like, yeah, a lot of great characters that we've kind of put on the sidelines for a long time. Yeah, and he has that real youthful voice. Uh, he did so much great work in Marvel with youthful characters. To come in and really work on the Young Justice books, I think he's the right guy for, on the right project. Something else you guys revealed is comic book legend Mar Marv Wolfman is writing a new book for you guys, part of uh, Primal, the Primal yeah, Age? Pr Primal Age, yeah. It, it's, it's a stunt we came up with to basically pretend like there was this project from the early 80s, um, but it's actually a new toy line that, that Funko's doing, and it's basically the DC Universe imagined as sort of uh, magical warriors from a fantasy realm, uh, much in the, the light, very similar to sort of uh, He-Man Masters of the Universe. And uh, so we kind of had fun with this idea, and we kind of created a fictitious website page that said this was a, you know, this was a, actually a thing from the 80s that was disbanded, and that Marv Wolfman was going to write it. Lo and behold, here we are today, and he's actually going to write the comic book to this fictitious <laughs> toy line that never came to be. Um, and he's, yeah, so it's an 80-page special that he's writing. It'll be sold exclusively in Target, and basically, um, you know, imagines the DC Universe in this fantastical setting, as if it were written in the early 80s. So he had a lot of fun kind of going back in time and, and thinking about tropes and things that were popular then and kind of working into the, to the story. 
Yeah. You know, and I've, I've known Marv a long time. I actually worked with Marv at Animation when I worked at ABC and then at Mainframe. Um, and it's fun to be talking with him and always talking product and characters. And he has such a deep understanding of our characters and base. And to come on something that really reinvents them in an interesting way seemed like the perfect guy for it. Um, and he's really excited by it, which, which gets us all excited too. I mean, for us, this is a new initiative. We're going, this, there's a, the, these line of toys will be going into Target in February. Uh, and we'll be doing an original book to be supporting that. Marvel will be writing all the stories in there. And again, it's, it's part of our outreach. We're putting books at Target, we're in Walmart, we're in the direct market, we're in the bookstores. You know, it's important for us to get our material out any which way possible. You, you guys are, are, are making it really exciting for creators to tackle some of these iconic uh, you know, characters that are in your library. Um, the Walmart books, the, the Wonder to Pay Giants that, that you have in there. Uh, Tom King and Brian, Bendis swapped the characters that they're working on. Right. Tom did Superman. Bendis finally did the character that everyone thought he was going to do when he came here, right? Uh, I, I was reading uh, an interview the other day. Bendis talked about how much he fell in love with the 12-page format that the, 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 those comics take. Do you think, are you getting the feedback from these creators that it's nice because it really changes the way they approach the storytelling? I, I like it because it, it makes them write more concise. You know, there's a lot of people that write for the six issue arc, you know, the, the trade paperback. And they have a story that they spread out over six issues where they feel it decompresses it. Here it's the complete opposite. And here they're trying to do a complete thought in 12 pages in a half of a comic. And I think it challenges them to be stronger, but also it also allows the artist to really be as strong as possible too, because it's about the storytelling and really finding those moments to really blow out and be big, knowing that you only have one real chance to really bring a big focus to it and, and draw people's attention to it. So I, I, I love this format, I'm excited by it. And we, we didn't talk about this, we've got um, Brian Azzarello and Greg Capullo doing Swamp Thing in our Halloween special that we're doing for Walmart. Perfect Halloween comic. Yeah, and, and, and you know what, and, and Greg is such, Greg, what, when he finished Metal, it was an exhausting task, but it had so many characters, so much in it. And he really wanted to do Swamp Thing to the point that we actually commissioned covers of Swamp Thing when we didn't even have a book from Greg, because he wanted to draw the character. Um, and then finally this opportunity came up and he just burned through this in, in such a quick way, but such a beautiful book. And uh, you know, it makes me just want more Swamp Thing from him. Who broke the news to Scott that Capullo was gonna go work with, with another writer? Oh, I think the internet did, I think. <laughs> <laughs> People are just posting up whatever they're working on now. It's a free for all. So, so Brian is also involved with another book that's had a, a, a little bit of attention lately. Uh, the first book in, in the black label, uh, Batman Dam number one dropped and it got a lot of attention for one page in there, but it's a stellar book that really launched this new imprint where you guys are basically letting, you know, your superstar talent go to town. G give me your reaction to the, the controversy around it and, and, and your thoughts on the story itself because the story is great. Yeah, no, I think the story is fantastic and I think the controversy you allude to, you know, I think it, it threatened to kind of overtake the, the awesome story that they created and I think that was kind of one of okay. the decisions we made to make changes in the art and not to go to a second printing on that particular version of the book, which was that, uh, you know, is that, are those scenes additive to the story? Do the, is, is this what the story is about? And the answer is no. And so at the end of the day, it was a production error that led to that book being published. We wouldn't have published it that way if we had known. And, um, you know, and, and I think it still fits within the guidelines of giving, you know, full creative, you know, as much creative uh, freedom to the talent as possible that services the story and so I think that's really the mission statement and uh, you know and they deliver the story is amazing and it's sold tr tremendously well so we're very happy with what they produce obviously that other story you know ended up being a very big topic for a while but you know we're moving forward and uh, we've got some other great books in the line yeah speaking of that uh, Jeff Johns is doing the next one the three jokers Absolutely, yeah, and they've already started working on that. He's doing that with Jay Fabak, and this is a book that's been in the pipeline for quite a while, and Jeff's been very busy between the movie and TV side, so this is one of the two things that he's most focused on, between this and really moving Doomsday Clock forward. Um, he's also coming to be launching Shazam pretty soon, too. So he's got a very full slate, but Three Jokers is, is near and dear to his heart. It's a story he wants to tell, um, and we've seen some of the stuff from Jay, and, and it looks beautiful, not surprisingly. A little birdie told me that the artwork that John Romita Jr. is doing for Frank Miller's Superman Year One is amazing. When are we going to see that book? 
They're going to see that book mid next year. Yeah. Uh, the goal for us on all these things, we don't want to rush the creators on the black label books. And these books are 48, 64 pages long. It takes a while to do that, and you don't want to have long gaps between, between issues. So once we have enough books banked, enough material banked, we want to be able to put it out on, on a bi-monthly schedule once every two months. So that'll probably move it towards the middle of the year. Right. That, that book is amazing, though. I mean, it's really coming out of these very long conversations that J John Romita Jr. and Frank Miller have had. And like the opening sequence, to spoil something, it's, it's you know, little cow baby coming to Earth, but it's from his point of view. I mean, and that story's been drawn a, a million times or hundreds of times, right? Uh, and it's always from that third party kind of God's eye point of view. And this is actually from the little baby's point of view. And you see him seeing the interior of the, sh the spacecraft, the, the doors opening and, and really kind of experiencing it from an alien's point of view coming to Earth and how different that must be. And it's just an amazing sequence of, of shots that they put together and really kind of show the magic the two of them can create together. And I'm gonna say funny, the funny part about it, it's, it's actually a romance book. The first book is about Clark's relationship with Lana Lang. That's the first chapter, it's built around that. Second chapter is around uh, Superman and Laurie Lamaris. Believe it or not, that's the second chapter and the third part is about Superman and Lois Lane. So he takes very key people in his life and he shows uh, Clark's and Superman's relationship with them and how his life changes and how it grows and how it changes with the relationships too. We're running out of time here, but I gotta ask you because uh, Aquaman, the movie's coming out in December, so obviously you guys have a, a lot of uh, books planned around that, including Kelly Sue DeConnick taking over uh, yeah. the, the title for it. A lot of people are excited about that, especially the, the, the twist that she's doing with Yeah, the listen, there's, there's two things that's happening with Aquaman. You got Kelly Sue coming on the book. You also got the Just League Drowned Earth storyline, which Scott Stein is working on with, uh, with James Tynan. I think that's a great placement because it really shows the scope of Aquaman's world and its, its impact on the DCU. And then you get to Kelly Sue, who's really going back to that personal story. Yeah, I, I mean, very quickly, I think she really kind of breaks down the character in fundamentals and rebuilds him back up. And it's just a really awesome exploration of his history and why he exists. Is this part of what DC Universe exists for? So that when you have, a, you have Aquaman and Shazam, you guys are able to curate the line of titles that goes through to, to really help people come out of the theater super excited and say, oh wait, I wanna go read more about this character? Absolutely, and we actually have a, a series of documentary specials that focus on the history of the characters. So we've done one for Shazam, we've done one for Aquaman, and those will debut around the time of those launches. And it's all about kind of giving our core fans a deep dive into the history of these characters and what makes them special over the decades. And we pull in a lot of amazing talent and creators to talk about that history. On Jim top Lee. of all the comics. Right. Jim Lee, Dan DiDio, the publisher of DC Comics. Give it up for him. Thanks for having us. Thank man. you, Thank gentlemen. You Thank you, guys. Keep following all the fun at, and the hashtag It's a Fan Thing. And coming up next year on the live stage, we've got the cast of Stan Against Evil. Stick around. Hi, I'm Jackie Jennings with Sci-Fi Wire. If you can't get enough of New York Comic Con, go ahead and subscribe to our YouTube channel for news, interviews, cosplay, and so much more. What are you waiting for?